What's up, Scrappy peeps? It's Adele from Inky Quill, and today I am scrapping some of my favourite photos of Arch and my nana. Uh, these were taken the day that we told her that we were expecting Violet, which was very exciting. And Archie made a little painting, like a blue and pink painting, uh, and said that uh, said I'm going to be a big brother. And we gave it to all of the the, the grandparents when we caught up with them. Uh, and today I was quite indecisive about papers. So I was going through this new paper pack that I had and there were lots that could have worked. Now this was filmed after that video that I did the other week uh, as part of the Inky June Marathon using this rainbow paper. And I wanted to not use it because I had literally just filmed a video the day before, I think this one, <laughs> using that paper. But... I couldn't help it. I There's something about these colours that are just, it's me all over and I absolutely love it. Uh, so I tried, I grabbed a few papers and that's what I usually do if I'm going through a paper pad and uh, I'm trying to figure out, I'll cull them down to like the final, it's like the final five or something and then I'll go through them. And I was tempted to use this peachy floral like a, it's like a coral, light corally color uh, floral because it reminded me of something that my nana would wear. Uh, but in the end, so I was tempted to use it. And looking back, it would have worked really well. But I think because the colors in the painting in the photo are so bright, it just, there was something about it that wasn't working for me. So I ended up with the rainbow and my intention was, I had lots of intentions with this, uh, this layout and things changed a little bit my intention was to have uh, this beautiful floral stencil which I don't know where it's from but it is part of my Brisbane Expo haul which would have been June or Jul July two years ago uh, here on Inky Quill and I wanted to use this stencil because it, it does remind me very much of my nana my nana is very floral my mum is very floral and alas I have inherited the floralness and I am also very floral <laughs> and so uh, I wanted to use this with some texture paste because I haven't used texture paste I feel like for a while and I'm just using a spatula to uh, apply my liquid tex texture paste and I was aiming to have the uh, flowers come out of the top oh, it's the best the reveal is the best bit when it's all dry uh, I was going to have it this way but then I turned it and I was like "Ooh, I think I might like that better and I was really trying to avoid having the paper this way because I when I decided to use this stripe paper I wanted to do it in a different way than I did uh, that other layout the other week but it didn't end up that way and that's okay uh, I think it's uh, quite often in these paper packs you can get the same paper two or three or sometimes even four times and I think that it's it's okay to make layouts that have similar uh, background compositions using the same background paper these are in different albums I think so it's not like I'll turn the page and there'll be another one so off camera I did do a coat of clear gesso uh, over the entire piece of paper so I have clear gesso and then I did the texture paste over the top I should have said that at the start I forgot uh, and because I knew I wanted to do some sort of watercolory or acrylic ink or something wet and watery and it was going to soak into the paper otherwise uh, so I grabbed my watercolor sets and I tried to match up the colors but I wanted you to still be able to see that they were it was watercolored on I didn't want it to blend in too much uh, so I really like the way that the dark navy looks in the bottom left hand of the page uh, and I'm just adding some splatters because I do like a good watercolor splat splat here splat there I've dried that off this layout luckily I didn't splat my nana in the face that was that was very lucky because uh, if we watch if you watch the last video you will see that I didn't have as much luck with avoiding adding a bit of color to uh, someone's eyeball in the, in the last process video at uh, the last layout. So I'm sticking down my pictures 
and I'm using wet glue because I've got that texture paste and my double-sided tape would not uh, stick to it properly so I always use wet glue and then I decided to bump up this middle photo on some craft foam and fluked the right sized piece of craft foam to fit to my photo and I'm just sticking that on I decided when I when I do things at a bit of a jaunty angle uh, I like to keep the middle photo straight and then the other two photos are a, a bit more wonky a little bit the, the left photo is definitely the wonkiest so then I'm using these beautiful little stickers that a lovely subscriber sent me. So thank you very much if you sent me those uh, in some happy mail. And I've been saving um, using them because I wanted to use them in the kids' baby albums. But I couldn't resist because Nana, Nana loves deers and bambies. It's her thing. She collects them. I started collecting them too. Uh, but whenever I find one, I tend to give it to her. Like if I find one in a op shop, um, which is what we call our thrift shops here in Oz, and she absolutely loves collecting little Bambi figurines. And she started collecting them probably, oh, maybe like 15, 20 years ago. And nowadays they are so difficult to find uh, because of all of the, like, it's a bit cute and hipster and quirky to have little vintage figurines uh, in your house. So they're a lot harder to find. But on the rare occasion that I find one, I always send one her way. And so when I found this little uh, deer in this sticker book, I knew that I definitely had to use it on this page somehow. And because these stickers are clear, I just stuck them down to a piece of white cardstock so that they would uh, pop out. Because if I was to stick them just straight on the paper, it would that you wouldn't be able to see um, and appreciate the cuteness uh, of the little figurines or little figures, I should say. I also grabbed a blue bunny because I thought that could tie into the blue part of this uh, background paper quite well. And then a couple of other little bits. There's a radio and a little doll and some little birds as well. So while, I, while I'm cutting out these bits, I don't know what other embellies I'm going to use. I've got a few sticker sheets here and there uh, that I really want to try and use up and I found a stash. I'm about to endeavour sorting my ephemera, which is going to be a fun time. Uh, and I've been unpacking a couple more boxes from my craft room and I found a uh, hidden container of older stickers and things. So I've got a few bits and pieces that I was trying to use up. And then that ephemera pack uh, is a new one, is it? Is that Paige Evans one or is it Pink Paisley or it's one of those? Uh, and I just had it on my desk. So I found a couple of bits there that I thought could work. And I've really been loving bumping up embellishments on uh, some craft foam lately. And I, I don't know, it just, it gives a little bit of dimension without making things too chunky and just, I think, brings a whole nother dimension to your um, pages so if you haven't tried that before craft foam is really fun um, or if you wanted to get acid free proper scrapbooking tape you could uh, it's just a really fun way to use the same techniques with your page but just spice it up a little bit and um, give them a bit of 3d-ness as I like to call it so in that ephemera pack, there was this heart, um, little three hearts joined together. So I just tore them apart along the perforated sections and separated them. Whenever I do embellishment clusters, I kind of like one of them to be the star of the show. Uh, so the, the bigger, bulkier one. And that's definitely this giant clump of things on the left, which is all blues and a little bit of purpley blue in there as well. Uh, and so I'm just adding bits and pieces to it. You know, I can never go past adding a puffy heart here and there and everywhere, just everywhere. Uh, I know that I'm going to put my title between that pink heart and the deer, but I don't know what my title is and I don't know what I'm using. I feel like I need a bit of a contrast, so I'll get to that in a moment. But first, sticking more things on this I don't know what it is about this paper, but it makes me want to stick and plonk all the things. I think it's because it has all of my favorite colors on there 
and I feel comfortable sticking and plonking a ton of embellishments on there. Um, I really wanted to use that because of the sentiment, but it just, it was way too big. It didn't, it didn't work. So I'm just popping in a few tiny little bits, tucking in some pieces here, there and everywhere. Uh, the reason why I'm posting this video today is because yesterday was Nana's birthday and I'm recording this before uh, it's actually her birthday, but we're going to have lunch tomorrow and uh, which will be really nice because of course with all of the things happening this year, I haven't been able to spend a lot of time um, with her even though she lives very close by and because restrictions have eased greatly uh, here in Australia, we're able to catch up again, which is really nice. And um, it'll be a good time to go have lunch. Archie will be uh, at daycare, so it'll be a, a calm lunch, <laughs> which will be lovely to enjoy. And then I might pop over with him in the afternoon. Um, but yes, so I wanted to post this video uh, this week because it's Great Nana's 91st birthday. Wowee. Um, and yeah, she's a very, very special lady in my life. Um, so if you wanted to say a little happy birthday in the comments down below, I'll show her um, on the weekend when I see her again. Um, she would absolutely love to to see all of the, the messages because I don't think she really gets what I do. She, she kind of does. She knows I do, she knows what YouTube is and she knows I do videos, but I don't think she understands that people like to watch YouTube like they do TV. Um, so yeah, she's, she's, she's learning. She's, she's figuring out what it is, <laughs> but yeah, she's a very special lady in my life and, um, I look forward to celebrating with her. Um, well, it will be yesterday when you see this video, but for me, it's not yesterday. <laughs> so then I decided to do the title as surprise, and I love these stickers because once again they've got a they've got like a little leafy design on them, and I associate Nana with florals and leaves and that type of thing. Uh, so I use those, and then I didn't know what to do down the bottom. I felt like I needed something cursive and I just needed um yeah I needed something that wasn't so blocky uh so I just did some brush lettering not really brush lettering it's just a, it's just cursive with a paint pen and uh then it was very scratchy uh the background of this paper because of all of the clear gesso so I used some whiteout tape um a la Lauren Hender, my YouTube inspo, and uh, I did my journaling on top of there. So I was just writing about um, what happened that day. And then I had a complete mental blank with how to spell eighth. It's funny when you don't spend a lot of time writing, you forget how to spell words that look a bit clunky. And I've always thought eighth looked and 40. They're two words that have always stumped me a little bit and I have to double think and tongue tongue is another one and choose and chose and lose and loose there's yeah there's a few words that you've got to kind of really think about it to know how to spell them properly uh, so I wrote that down it's I just wanted to say that it was her eighth great grandchild and then added a little bit of journaling in those extra two hearts and this layout is all done jazz hands so thanks for tuning in today peeps only a few more days of the inky june marathon to go um, which is a bit sad but i'm going to try really hard to have a live stream uh, coming up in the next couple of months which will be good fun all right peeps have a lovely weekend and i'll see you tomorrow bye